Well, um, it, it, it certainly seems that in some areas, subjectivity, namely your own viewpoint, is, is kind of relevant, you know. Uh, so if you're checking with somebody, are you happy? And they say, no, we're not happy. And you say, well, actually, by our standards and by the service you fill out, you actually are happy, you're just mistaken. We, we kind of think there's something wrong about that. So there's some relevance to the person's own testimony about saying, actually, I'm really unhappy, things aren't working out for me. And you say, okay, well, that's subjective. But in this particular context, subjectivity is significant and is important. Whereas on other things, if you're measuring blood pressure and the person says, oh, subjectively, I feel fine. You say, well, actually, your blood pressure is 160 or 120. You're not well. Um, there's a situation where the objective measure really kicks in and is worthwhile. So part of the issue is saying, well, there are certain contexts where objective measures are really appropriate, but there are other contexts where the subjective, what it is like and how you feel about things is also appropriate as well. And just thinking that there's one measure that fits all contexts is a mistake. Yeah, it's, it's very much dichotomous or black and white, you know. The yeah, are right, yeah. Are so, so there's a way of trying to figure out there are certain contexts where it's appropriate, there are other contexts where it isn't appropriate. And it's right, you know, in the sense it's not, it's just not my view, but it actually objectively is the case that subjective values are right in this particular area. Yeah, yeah that established. Uh, how is that, like, come to? Is it... Is it um, how it affects someone? Is it like why why is there good things and why is there bad things? Yeah, so there are, there are, there are really competing stories out there about how that goes, and I, I suppose one traditional one that's been lasted a long time is that it's God, you know, so God establishes values, and there you got moral objectivity, um, and for for a variety of reasons, people are rowing back from that view, not least by the fact that you're in a society where a lot of people don't believe there's a God. Uh, or you're in a secular society where, where people... So the question then arises, well, where, where, where do we get our values from? And you've got different kind of then competing stories. So one story might be that we're hardwired in a certain way to have values. So yeah, maybe the, the hereditary thing that... Well, yeah, or an evolutionary thing, that it's the, the survival of the species is helped by the fact that we look after people in a certain kind of way. Um, so um, you can give an evolutionary account of that, but older views, someone like David Hume, great Scottish philosopher, right. says we, we have in an innate sense of sympathy. So we have this innate emotional response to people, and that's the basis of our ethical uh, reaction. And interestingly enough, Buddhism also has the same view. So the Dalai Lama's view is that we are, uh, as human beings, constituted or hardwired so that we have this compassion for other people. And then the basis of ethics is this kind of sense of compassion. And if you don't feel the compassion, it means that there's some problem. Yeah, there's so a mental issue there. Perhaps. Well, it could be mental or it could be that you're brought up in a society where you've been systematically trained out of it. Right.